But once I got a taste of the fame, unfortunately I become blinded. The fame just took over my life. And then I made a drastic mistake that I learned a harsh lesson on and will never ever repeat that. That's for sure. I've done that myself. My cousin Reg, and he played an old song called Warm Sheet. So from then on, really, it was a bit like a drug. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I was dreaming about it. From that age, of five or six, it wasn't till I was 12 that Grandma and Uncle Fred bought me a guitar because for all those years I kept asking at Christmas. One year later, I won my first talent quest with a couple of other guys. But that's when every song that came out, I'd be asking someone at school, do you know the chords to this? Do you know the chords to that? By the time I was 14 and a half and left school to start a painting apprentice, we only painted hotels. So that led me as a 14, 15, 16 year old, being able to sit in the public bar drinking raspberry and lemonade and playing my guitar and just singing. And then that's how I got to learn every song in creation. So that by the time I was 18 or 19, that's when I made, I guess, the real conscious decision to have a musical career, if I could. So the career for music started right there, and that year would be 1969. But once I got a taste of the fame, Unfortunately, I become blinded to the other life I had um, as a family man. The fame just took over my life. You were getting things without seemingly paying for them and always being patted on the back by everybody and you could never do no wrong, all that kind of stuff was part of the fame that became more the lure than the money. And with that fame came anything you dare ask for, you would receive. And I lived like that for 10 years. And then I made a drastic mistake. But I stood up in front of my audience one day and said, the next person who asked me to sing this song, this song, or this song, you can all get stuffed. It's something I learned a harsh lesson on and will never ever repeat that. That's for sure. Yes, I wanted the man, the big cigar. I got it. And then I got to hate the audience. Inside me, 
I knew I'd died and finished. It was over for me. Around about the 90s, I could no longer live without music. I realised that that obsession or love of music is what I can call it now was impossible to give up. So, here I am. I went and bought, you know, new outfits, new equipment, and fortunately, I have a son that I can tour with. We will give you the Brian Swainson experience. We will talk to our audience. I will be devoted to that audience.